there. Thank you for coming today and welcome to the Good Lab launch. This is a new cross-sector initiative where we're trying to build an ecosystem of support for social entrepreneurs and social innovation. I'm Julie Ellison, I'm the Director of Social Enterprise Works. Um, social Enterprise Works is a small organisation in Bristol that's been supporting the growth of the social economy for 21 years. It's actually our birthday this year, we're 21 years old. Hey. Hey. Um, I'm also a third sector entrepreneur in res residence for the University of Bristol. And I'd like to introduce you to Vari. Hi, so um, my name is uh, Vari Thralf and I'm the Student Enterprise Advisor at the University of the West of England who's um, the lead HEI, the lead uh, higher education institution, um, on the Good Lab project. Um, UAE's got a strong history in supporting social entrepreneurs, and over the past um, three years, we've been working very closely with Unlimited and HEFKE, the higher education funding institution for England, um, to support social entrepreneurs, and we've been developing a pipeline where we go through a process of try it, do it, and build it awards to enable social entrepreneurs, one, to, to go out there and try an idea, See, see what works, see if they can, they can make a difference, and if it does, then support them to, 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 to make that into a reality. Um, this all began, the, the Good Lab project began, um, with a meeting with uh, the University of Bristol and Social Enterprise Works down at the Engine Shed, where we'd all noticed the same, the same problem and the same concern, which was how do we, in a knowledge economy, enable our knowledge base within the two large universities within a, a university city um, to feed down to our social entrepreneurs, to our social enterprises. How do we connect research with social enterprises? And that was, that was the initial question. Um, and then we also picked up on other things, that you know, there's a lot of pockets of expertise in the city. And in fact, in Bristol, we can be very proud of the fact that we've got a great um, social economy. And um, using these as, as, a, as a sort of base, as a base point, we, we started like a lot of our ideas do, um, with a blank piece of paper. And we went, okay, well, how can we develop this? And that was where the, the Good Lab project came to fruition. Um, and Julie's going to explain now to you a bit about what the Good Lab project actually is. Okay, so the Good Lab is an initiative that was born out of something called the Sea Change Programme, which is a programme that's been funded by Unlimited, which is the Foundation for Social Entrepreneurs, a national organisation. And since 2005, they've been working in the higher education institutions, as Vari just mentioned. This is one of the final years of, of this particular programme, and they thought, right, well, let's start taking things out into the community and, and see if we can continue to build the ecosystem support. Um, so the Good Lab builds on this work in a, with a range of partners. I'm going to show you the slide um, of all our wonderful partners. She says. We'll get there in the end. Okay. So we've got a great group of partners here. Um, and um, we have um, been... Um, where am I? Um, um, building up uh, the uh, incubator at Can Mezzanine. And you can see their... their um, uh, logo there. We're working very closely with the School for Social Entrepreneurs and there's quite a few of um, the entrepreneurs that are part of that program here tonight and they're going to talk to you later. Um, the program has two strands of support. So we're working with 20 social ventures um, to help them scale up and increase their social impact. And then the other strand is to work with research communities and help uh, introduce research into the social innovation field in the region um, in order to um, create more impactful um, uh, adventures. Oh, I seem to have lost my... <laughs> lost it a bit. If you hold it up to your... Yeah. I mean, just, just following on from that, I mean, um, one of the key things around these, you know, working with these 20 social entrepreneurs is to enable us to develop, essentially, a toolkit. So, um, as uh, Julie's touched on, we'll be having the physical aspect of, of our activity, which is going to be based at Cannes Mezzazine. So that's going to be our incubator-based space. We're also going to be running an events programme, so a series of events, which will be um, used to support social enterprises from across the city and look at that transfer of research into social en enterprises. And we've identified five thematic groups which we want to specifically work in, which we, we worked out were the same 
uh, thematic groups in both institutions. So, um, like, correct me if I don't get this right, uh, environment, um, engineering, education, healthcare and creative industries are the five that we identified that we've got um, cross-disciplinary um, access to research and we are already working as, as two institutions collaboratively um, in these areas and actually there's a real need for how we then connect in with social enterprise in the city with this. And then further to that, the 20 social entrepreneurs, which is obviously going on in the physical space, will feed into our, our online pl platform, which uh, Julie will say a bit more about. So, um, well, actually, I might even leave that to Hope to okay. tell us more about that in a moment. Okay. Um, we're also um, working with Burgess Salmon, and they're going to be providing three seminars, um, which anybody is, is open to uh, any social enterprise in the city. If you want to look at the website, you'll find out more about that. So, what we'd like to do now is to introduce you um, to our... Swap the mics. Swap mics. Good plan. Um, we'd like to introduce you to the steering uh, committee, or steering group. Um, can anybody in the group come forward? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, we're going to have... We're going to have um, four talks from four of the steering committee. So I'm going to get you to introduce yourselves uh, first of all, and then we'll we'll um, have those little talks. Okay. Uh, hello, thank you. I'm uh, my name's Jamie Darwin. I work at um, uh, UWE, uh, where my uh, responsibility includes getting students involved in community-based volunteering and social action type projects. So I'm, so I'm interested in how we engage our students in social action, social change, which might be from a very, starting from a very dip your toe in the water, getting involved with existing uh, charities and community groups, through to starting to uh, think about their own ideas and how they can initiate their own projects and maybe uh, possibly develop into social enterprise as well. So if anyone's here interested in talking about how to engage UE students in that type of activity, I'll be around here for a bit. Thank you. Hello, my name's Matt Little and I'm one of the founder directors of a social enterprise called the Real Ideas Organisation. Um, we're a social impact business. We do two sets of stuff. We do um, a big body of work around community regeneration, particularly in Plymouth and Cornwall. Um, so we, we, we develop commercial ventures to bring old buildings back into use. We uh, run a bakery. We've got a Regency column that people pay us to go up. Uh, what else do we do? We do weddings and funerals. So that's my sales pitch. See me afterwards if you've got either of those planned. Um, and separately, we also work particularly with educational institutions, um, schools. So we tend to work with a younger age group around in the light of the new educational freedoms, how can schools think of themselves as social enterprises, both in how they run and operate, their supply chains, how they organise, how they staff, where they buy their IT, food and that sort of stuff, but also how the learning that happens in the school can be socially enterprising too, so that the children and young people can be learning dispositions and abilities that are essentially socially enterprising that will stand them in good stead later in life. Um, well, I'm Hope Talbot, and I'm the digital developer for the Good Lab project. Um, it has two strands. It has the physical space in Hanover House, and it also has the online platform, which is what I'm working on. So it's going to be a sort of toolkit to help um, local social entrepreneurs to scale up with their businesses. So I've been doing interviews and case, like, case studies of local businesses, and really going out and talking to people, and just getting as much as I can online. So if anyone has any businesses they'd like to talk to me about, or be interviewed with, and like to like, promote them, I can do that. Hi, I'm Molly and I work at University of Bristol and do quite a similar job to Jamie um, but at Bristol and um, so I work in the innovation and, and business startup incubator which is Basecamp um, and I'm the social enterprise consultant there and so I'm the University of Bristol lead on this project as well. Hi, um, I'm Will Pritchard, I'm a partnership and support manager um, at Unlimited and also a director at Uncaged. Um, as Julie's already mentioned, this was funded through the Sea Change programme, which we're now five years and £6 million pounds into. Um, but it's coming to an end. The early phases of that focused on uh, finding funding and supporting really early stage startups and uh, funding those directly. Um, as we've moved through the phases, we've kind of stepped back and, and looked at how we can uh, kind of promote ecosystems of support, but, but also to create that space for others to, others to do so. And initially that was quite scary because um, it involves taking your hands off the wheel a little bit and seeing what other people come up with. 
Um, but I'm really, really proud that, that Bristol collectively have stepped up and, uh, and given us something that is really exciting and is exactly the kind of thing that should be happening here already, but isn't. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Pam. Can you hear me? I've done the same thing Julie did. Um, I work at UWE. I'm a senior lecturer up there. My research and teaching is around social enterprise entrepreneurship. One of my students is here tonight. So it's always nice when you start seeing people that you've actually um, known in one phase of their lives to be actually in the room. Um, with UWE, what do I want to say? I do my research, I'm very interested in working with community groups, so please come and see me. Um, my teaching is a different beast of that, and Chris will follow us. I do a lot of supervision for our final year undergraduates at the business school. Um, if I said to you, maybe a dozen of them find their way to me doing social enterprise, either being on the websites and the people we deal with here, um, doing their enterprise projects or setting up businesses, as Chris did, or um, in doing literature reviews. And if I say there are only a dozen of them, I mean that's out of a thousand people. The business school is one of the largest in the country. So it's a very small group of people. And it's generally they're coming because they have a passion, an interest, or with Chris, he'd already set up his business. And he was looking for a way to put his degree to follow in line with what he wanted to do. I think that's a problem. Because, you know, I came today, I was sort of joking with Jamie. I didn't change clothes to come because I thought I'd fit in here. I do not always fit in looking like this when I'm at a business school. Um, so students find me because I'm not the person wearing the suit. I understand why business schools, perhaps, this doesn't fit well with what our students think is to happen. So often they're hearing about it for the first time when, when they meet me. And, and I think that's, that's a problem, that we need to think how do we engage better right from the beginning? Because often they, they've got a grant. That's how I meet them. So for that, I'd really welcome some of those ideas, and uh, also talk to my student. He'd probably give you the other side of this uh, <laughs> story. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'll just move over here. Fear of deafening myself. Hi, um, I'm, I'm Daniel Oliver. Um, I do three things. I spend about half a day a week, um, or maybe a bit more at times, coordinating the Bristol and Bath Social Enterprise Network. You'll see our banner over there. Um, amongst other things, um, we do an amazing networking event called Good People, Good Business. You can come and tell your story personally about um, how and why you've set up your business um, and also we convene people not just to network and learn about each other but also convene people around opportunities so we do more market development work as well. Um, I'm also a non-executive director, proud non-executive director of an organisation called Campus Skate Park which runs an amazing social enterprise skate park up in Winterbourne and also they are very excitingly taking on um, a new site, we're going to be running two sites simultaneously in South Bristol and Bishopsworth taking on the old Bishopsworth pool which is going to be a fantastic project, so um, watch this space for this one. Most of my time is spent on something called Assembly, which is an informal partnership of social entrepreneurs, consultants and experts, a handful of us. And we work with a whole range of different clients and organisations, anything from local authorities, universities, housing associations, um, and also small businesses. And we just really help people take a different approach to addressing social or civic challenges. And sometimes that involves a programme, sometimes that involves a business model. Um, so. I'm really interested in the Good Lab project um, and interested in my work and really believe in it, passionate about it, because um, a lot of the things that service our society at the moment aren't really working as well as they, they used to 30 years ago. The world is changing, we're struggling to catch up. Um, and a lot of people in this room now and a lot of the people involved in this program are part of the solution, which is building the infrastructure, support those businesses and coming up with those new ideas. So you hear a lot of terms like social innovation and ecosystem and you also see a lot of hype about that as well. And what I really believe in is just cutting through all that hype and being really pragmatic and saying that we've just got to take a different approach to solving problems which uh, face all of us and affect us all in some ways. And so that's why I'm really supportive of Good Lab because the relationship with higher education is a really important one and we need to be able to access those assets and that wealth of knowledge and bring that to bear on new projects. Um, very short from me uh, because I'm going to say a few words in a minute. So I'm Rebecca de Corpo. I'm a Knowledge Exchange Project Manager at the University of Bristol and um, I'm very passionate about what other people do, basically. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. Um, and as mentioned, we'll now have a little bit more detail from, from four of our um, steering group. Um, who are we having first? Pam. I gave some more didn't I? <laughs> I won't spend the full four minutes. Um, really, um, they'd asked me to speak about the um, teaching side of it and the learning side. And, and I, I did that in my introduction, I think, to some degree. It's really looking at 
for me, um, I mean, I've been in social enterprise, I've set up social enterprises. Um, I'm very interested in everyday practice and how that meets theory. For me, that's where it's very interesting, social change. Um, I find it worrying, a little worrying, that why is it this year when we gave choices to so many of our students, out of 300, um, the two young men who came to me and said, oh, I'd actually like to look more at social entrepreneurship, come from Leia. Uh, and they said, we're really interested in taking this back to our country, which means none of our home students have actually chosen that for something. Um, some of the people setting up enterprise projects or helping them design their own business plans and going out and speaking with people, three or four of them are looking at doing social enterprises. And again, it's new for them. They're not quite certain how to do it, and they're not quite certain how to make a business plan fit, and they're not quite certain what social impact is. And I've said to one, I think you actually, you need to kind of get a handle on what you're offering to people, because he's very keen about motivation. And I said, well, what are you motivating people to do? Um, and, and it's that idea. They're sort of struggling, I think, to find that idea of how to make the connections. Um, perhaps they just haven't lived as long as some of us have in the room. Uh, and, they, and sometimes it's just they haven't gone out to the real world and seen these things. Perhaps it's because they're from a business school and they all want to make a lot of money and think they're going to make a lot of money very quickly and they don't see social enterprises the way there. Whatever it is, we, we certainly are only getting to a few of those through our business school. And business schools, we are the cash cows. You know, we're the things that bring money in, we're the people that bring students in. So that's what's concerning about it, that we have so few of them. So for me, I, I, I'm welcome having conversations with anyone in the room about how that, how that works. And again, as I say, um, one of my students is in the room, I need to go and talk to him and touch base. Did that sound like his experience from the other side of it? Yeah. And I would welcome having conversations with you. I didn't bring a business card, but I think my email address is available through the website. Thank you, Pam. Um, would Will like to come back and talk a bit more about unlimited? And <laughs> so, why does Good Lab matter? I guess is a question that a few people have asked me, and I think it's a really valuable one. Um, I'll jump back to you when we first started running the Sea Change program, um, the Hefke program, as it as it was called then, and. What we did, by and large, was we gave users, universities as partners um, to give small grants to students who are starting up social enterprises. And these were kind of maybe up to two and a half thousand pounds. A lot of them were, were much, much lower than that. What that allowed people to do was to explore an idea, see how it worked, see whether it worked. Sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't either. It's equally valuable because there's learning there. And then we fast forward a bit and we get to now. and. Things have changed quite a lot. Our strategy has changed quite a lot. Um, and that's as a result of a lot of evaluation and a lot of reflection on, on where we're going and, and what we're trying to achieve as an organisation in, in a broader sense. Um, I think perhaps we've been quite keen to kind of have our bit, whether that's of the sector or geographically or you know whatever it might be. You know, this is what we do, that's our bit. We can make a difference there. And that can work, and that, and that does work, and I think from some of the success stories from phase one to 2.5, which is probably the most clumsily named phase I can think of, but anyway, um, there are success stories there. There's some real success stories there. Um, but what it didn't allow us to do was embed and sustain to the degree that we wanted to. What we really wanted was for universities or other partners to pick this up, to run with it and see what happened and for it to become mainstream, for it to become a part of what they do, so that social enterprise would be talked about in the same breath as any other kind of enterprise. So it's not siloed, it's not sat on its own over there in whether that's a physical space or you know an intellectual space, but for it to be a key strand of everything that a university does. Perhaps even to look at how social enterprise could be used as a tool to deliver on other university objectives. Widening participation is a, is a key interest of mine, and social enterprise is such such a solid answer to some of the problems that WP offices face. And that's kind of the thinking that took us to where we were when we put out a call for this kind of project, was what happens if we give support and we encourage others and we create a space and let them lead it and put the people in it, or hope that the people apply to be in it, who can create that, who can co-create that vision. And that, to me, is what Good Lab fundamentally is about. It's about everyone 
knowing what they're talking about, sure, but stepping back a little bit as well and going, what happens if all of us chip in? What happens if none of us say this is our space or this is what we do or this is, you know, this is, like I said, this is our bit? What happens if we all go, this belongs to all of us? And, you know, fundamentally, a lot of cool stuff happens when you throw a load of interesting people who know their shit into a room and see what happens. Loads of cool stuff happens. And that, to me, is what Good Lab is about. Um, and that, to me, is why I'm so excited to see what comes out of this and why I'm so proud that you guys put this together and that it got through the unlimited process because there's nothing like turning up at an event and someone asking you to talk about a cluster and being able to go, yeah, Bristol's one and they're doing really cool stuff and here it is and check it out and yeah, you should be jealous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, well. Um, Rebecca, would you like to come back? Um, so I'm going to start by telling you that a few years ago I was part of a consortia around the London 2012 Olympics and I remember meeting somebody with the title Knowledge Exchange Project Manager and I thought, what is that? Like, what a douchebag. Um, and karma um, does exist because here I am as a Knowledge Exchange Project Manager several years later. Um, so when I was looking at the Good Lab and what it was all about, I saw the word um, experimental project and I could relate to that because in fact once I was offered the job at the University of Bristol, um, I was told I was in fact an experiment um, and that was great. Um, and it was great actually because you know that fits me really well and um, I think perhaps you're all in that space is also um, because what we're doing is fluid, um, we sit in the grey space domain we're the kind who thrive on the unpredictability of human interaction. We're operators, yeah, and we trust our instincts. Uh, we stealthily pursue the madness of this business because in our hearts we know there is an unyet game-changing project to be born, yeah? So, not big-noting myself, the reality is I'm actually a straightforward project manager, yeah? Um, but I'm in the development space and Project managers are essentially brokers. We are in fact a resource not only to our internal academic community, but to all of the collaborators outside of the university. So we are a resource, hint, hint, yeah? Um, what is knowledge exchange? Well, actually, I can't even say those words, but knowledge exchange and social innovation, that was something that um, Julie asked me to pick up on. And I guess I sort of approached, you know, reports and colleagues of mine who are working in this area. Um, we know that knowledge exchange came from a high degree of formal technology um, transfer through patents, licenses and spin-outs from the STEM subjects. But of course, this is broadened out across the piece. The academic community across all the disciplines now are involved in knowledge exchange um, to varying degrees. Um, we, I suppose... The report that I have seen most recently describes the kind of activities in the space as um, people-based, problem-solving, community-orientated, and obviously the commercialization side. There's still a lot of literature that could actually be produced um, about the kind of stuff that we're about to do, and that matters to douchebags like me in the knowledge exchange world, because in fact that's what we're about. But um, I guess the invitation is, um, that, you know, to you is to do the projects, do the stuff, and the academics and the support community can actually write about it and do that really well. And that's important because obviously, you know, while public sector language can be a bit dull, actually it's, it's useful to all of us in, in many ways. Um, when I was asking colleagues like Andrew Ray, who's my development, um, knowledge exchange development manager, what this was about, knowledge exchange and social innovation, he was talking about the fact that this is researchers and social entrepreneurs working together to create a unique, a unique mix of business need, rigorous research, practical skills, and cutting edge expertise. Stuff we're all familiar with, but the focus should be on the outcomes beyond the university, um, with everyone learning from the experience. And I guess, you know, that's the underlying message. One of the things that's really exciting at Bristol University, and I know will be replicated across UE, Bath, any other universities at the moment, is that we're finding from the analysis that we do that students generally really care about the world at the moment. You know, they care about their place in it. They want to do work that actually matters um, to themselves. Our students look after themselves really well. They're, they're really healthy. If I think back to how I lived when I was that age, ridiculous. Um, but also, you know, over 80% of them volunteer. There's a whole raft of data that we have now that really tells us 
um, that our students are the entrepreneurs and the leaders of the world for sure. And that's really, really exciting to sort of see and nurture that through these kind of, um, these kind of labs. So, um, four parting messages, um, one of which is the Bristol method, yep. Um, we've got an opportunity to record this, learn about it, um, write about it, share it around the world, not just within Bristol. Um, I don't feel pressured by the fact that we should be doing it now. I think there's a, you know, there's a time and a place to do it, and now is good. Um, anyone who shuns learning through knowledge exchange is probably doing their enterprise a disservice. Um, think big, think global. Social enterprise doesn't have to be remain local and small. Um, you know, let's let's play a part in the city regions importing, exporting, innovation game in a major way. Um, find out who your local knowledge exchange project manager is. They can do a lot for you. And um, finally, congratulations to Good Lab Southwest. Um, let's get to it. Cheers. Thank you. I wouldn't call you a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Um, my final words are Thank you. Um, a little bit of a gear change here because I've probably got the air of a sort of nervous father-in-law about to do a, a bad wedding speech um, with my biro written notes. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm the director of a social enterprise. So we, we probably call Rio a social impact business because essentially uh, we, we trade our services with schools, educational systems, people who buy bread from us. And we try to make that transaction have as much social impact as possible. So that's something I think about a lot. And it's a, a choice I made many years ago in starting that sort of business with, with colleagues um, around the ethics of how you want to do business and how you want to make change happen and what you do with your profits if you make them, if you're lucky, some years. Um, I think particularly because for us we, we trade with schools and I've got very strong feelings about um, what happens to taxpayers' money. People pay taxes to see... Um, stuff happen with their children in schools, they don't want me buying a Jaguar and driving it around Bristol off the back of that. They want to see that money channeled back into more work with young people. And that's why I think social enterprise as an organising form for business is a very important one. It's a very ethical choice. Um, I wanted to talk a bit, given that choice um, that, that people at Rio have made about how they do business, about um, the starting point for our work and then sort of Try to draw it through was asked to talk about sort of university and good lab community partnerships and, and lessons and ideas and things so my view is that children and young people have got such good ideas um, even way back down into primary school I've seen amazing work happen where children and young people do things that are real and make a difference both in their life in their school and in the wider community um, they're really good at making positive change happen but we don't often place them in positions where they're able to do so. The systems and structures that they're sort of held in, and I'm talking particularly about schools, but there's some inference, I think, through to, to all academic institutions. Those systems and structures don't always enable them and encourage them to be as socially enterprising and as impactful and as consequential as, as they could be. I mean, in a sense, schools, in one way, are sort of industrial content delivery systems taken to a bit of an extreme. And I, th I think there's a real challenge because to me, when I, I work with a lot of schools and there's some brilliant schools, but they're fighting a systemic challenge really, good teachers, because there's a degree of disconnect between school and the real world. And school is the real world in one way, it's got chairs in it and food, and there's oxygen in there. But it doesn't feel like the real world when you're in there. And it's the same sometimes for all academic institutions. I think there's something really interesting there, sort of philosophically and practically, about that disconnect. And one of the reasons I'm interested in Good Lab is it's trying to break that disconnect down. It's hard to do, but it's important. So when you're in that box, that school, what you're really learning is how to pretend to do things. You're not learning how to really do things. So you're learning how to pretend to write a newsletter because the newsletter never reaches an audience. So you don't realise, you know, your ideas aren't really taken seriously because it, no one ever reads what you've written as, you know, and, and critiques it. And you don't have debate or you don't sell things that you make. It just goes back in a cupboard. And I think the more we can do to break down that disconnect, um, the better, because then you're learning to do it for real. You're experiencing consequences. And if you experience consequences, you make a difference, but you also learn more because you learn from that feedback loop. So I think good life's particularly important 
in terms of breaking down that because first of all it's focusing on building social enterprise dispositions and abilities and that's really important and Dan, Dan was very eloquent about where we are and why that's important. It breaks down barriers between institutions and community, the real world, um, and it's another way to bring massive resources, the social capital of universities and H institutions to bear on really important problems, issues and opportunities. So it's very, very valuable. But I think it's, it's important about how we go about, go about breaking down the barriers um, and creating this porosity. Um, I've, I've worked in academia many years ago. Um, I've also been involved um, running community regeneration partnerships and at Rio commissioning research um, and evaluations. And there's sort of, sort of common threads and some frustrations that, that, that have come from doing that sort of work. And things like the, the, the metrics and measurements that drive us all, they can end up driving activity. So you end up doing things for the metrics and measurements rather than the real purpose. They sort of divert you off course. Um, the, some of the research that I've been involved in, particularly because it's social science and it's about whether children and young people's lives are changing, usually what we do together is conclude it's complex and that more research is needed. And that's true, but it doesn't really help make things better in that school or that setting. So how we can ground research out in making real differences and the sort of legwork you need to do that, and the detail you need to focus on, and the ways you need to structure the partnerships is really important. And I, I hope we can do some of that legwork in Good Lab. And I think the, one of the things I thought finish on is that the lessons for us all going forward, if we want Good Lab to have maximum impact on all of us, um, community, existing social enterprises, um, and the university partners coming to the table, is. So it's a bit of jargon I'm going to use, but I quite like the phrase. It's sort of balanced value partnerships so that we're constructing relationships between researchers and community and community organisations that are, are balanced. So it's equal, partic equal participation and also that the partnership creates value that people have identified on both sides. So of course, there has to be brilliant research and brilliant academic arguments made, but at the same time that has to be answering questions in ways that really matter to the community partners. So it's very much a relationship of equals we need to construct, where everyone's recognised as an expert in their own world. And it's how you mix those, ex those, those experts up together to create social change is key, I think, here. And then finally, I just wanted to touch on something that was mentioned by another speaker. I also think to an extent change starts where you are. Um, and it's weirdly easier to try to fix someone else's problems a long way away. Because you don't really know what the world's like from where they're stood. So you can sort of theoretically have some ideas about how to solve the problem. But you don't really know how you're going to solve that. But it's easier to start where you are and solve your own problems and make things a bit better from where you stand. And I think it's very interesting to think how um, we can apply social enterprise principles, ideas, established businesses um, within universities, within the supply chains of universities and in the way that um, students work day to day. Because um, coming back to the work with schools, who knows best about how a school works but the pupils? The pupils um, in a school, if you talk to them in depth, they can put a precise finger on how teaching and learning is happening in the school, what could be done to make it better, more effective. They're, they're, they're such experts in teaching and learning in that system and so often underutilised in terms of grabbing that expertise and using that expertise to make change happen in that institution. So I think it's interesting to sort of take the lessons from that and think about well, the expertise here and how we start where we are within universities too. So it's not just about taking university expertise into a community setting, it's thinking about how change can happen right across. So that was my rambly wedding speech. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm hoping while we've all been talking, some food has arrived.
Yay! We're going to have a bit of a food break and then we're going to have a bit of um, uh, entrepreneurial pitching, a bit of give and get. Um, we've got about 10 entrepreneurs here and um, some support organisations who are going to tell you what's on offer. We will have a 15-20 minute break and grab some food first. And social enterprise wine. Now, there we are. <laughs>